Good afternoon, Jules fans, and welcome back once again to Jules in the Blood TV as our first Monday review of the season takes place as we have a little look back at the newspapers um, surrounding Saturday's opening day 0-0 draw at Doncaster. Um, obviously wasn't at the game, so, so can't, as I always say, if I'm not there, I can't, I can't comment too much on specific performances and displays of individuals, etc. But all in all, from what I've read so far, it was a, a very positive point. Um, we was probably on the back foot for the majority of the game. Um, but that's not to say we weren't without our own chances. Um, so yeah, let's have a let's have a look. We've got the first paper here, which is the Sunday edition of the Football League paper. Um, Stopper Holy is the Jules' saviour um, for all his criticisms and stick that he's received during pre-season and at the back end of last season. It's great to see. Obviously, I've I've been pretty vocal myself in. Criticism, I suppose, is the, is the best word of, of Thomas Holy, um, but it's great to see that he's um, put in a good performance on Saturday and his, um, his display's gone a long way to earning us a, a valuable opening day point, which is great. Um, little comments from A.D. Pennock at the end. I love clean sheets. We came to a tough place, but we really stood on our own and we had chances as well. Their keeper made a few fantastic saves. Um, only watching the highlights and, and reading social media reports. I don't know if it was a few. He's definitely made one or two. Um, but yeah, um, I think the big thing was defensively we're a lot better um, as as we'd hoped throughout the pre-season campaign. And um, obviously offensively we, we wasn't sure. That's been the, the sort of viewpoint and the standpoint and the, the general consensus from most Gillingham fans that after losing Bradley Dack and Cody McDonald, maybe goals will dry up a little bit. But... We weren't without chances, um, obviously didn't convert any this week, um, but the main thing is um, we dug in, stood up and was counted um, and, and picked up a very good point. Um, On to the Monday edition of the Medway Messenger, New Look Jill's Thrill Pennock, if you can see that there. Um, yeah, says it all really. Um, plenty of new signings, I think if you go through the starting 11, um, Zach Kwani, Luke O'Neill, Billy Bingham, Tom Eaves, all new. I think if the, the substitutes that come on, Liam Nash has come on as well. He's another new signing. So, so it is it is quite a, a quite a turnover in terms of the personnel. Um, Connor Ogilvy, sorry, there's another one. So yes, yeah, there's plenty. It's a good half a dozen or more that, that are new additions that have only arrived in the summer. So, um, in that context, it even makes it almost a, even a bit of a better point. Um, inside we've got Pennock happy with the clean sheet rival still helping me says Holy. that's an interesting one uh, Thomas Holy has praised the man he is keeping out of the Gillingham team for his helping hand um, goes on to say obviously that Holy started at Doncaster as we know on Saturday Nels has more experience and he gives me advice says Holy. it is a bonus for me that Nels is still at Gillingham so it seems that despite the fact that he's not in the team at the moment Stuart Nelson he's still being the ultimate professional, which is what we've heard coming out of the club all summer, um, still doing all the right things and looking after his, his teammates, especially his fellow stoppers. Um, a bit more from Holy Me and fellow Jules Pro Tom Hadler and the other goalkeepers get help from Nels. We are friends and like a little family within a big family. Um, and then there's just a little bit about obviously Holy started six games last season before being dropped. I suppose is, is the best word it was really for the, the final day drama at Northampton that we all know well know um, well enough about now. Um, but yeah, I think it's very pleasing, like I've already said, that Thomas Holy, who's come under fire a little bit from myself included, um, but I'm happy enough to, to put my hand up and say fair play. Um, eat a little bit of humble pie, so to speak, because it's, it's great to see and it's hopefully that he can gain some momentum and confidence now and, and kick on and put in more consistent um, performances over a sustained period of time, I think would, would be great. Um, I don't think anyone would be disappointed about that. Um, there's another piece a little bit further down. Jules Boss welcomes Tough Cup Challenge as we travel to Championship side Reading tomorrow night. Um, I'm sure there would be, I'm assuming there will be a few changes. We'll just have a look. Um, it says defender Alex Lacey is unlikely to make the trip. Um, He's been struggling with a knee injury, which we all know about. Um, Pennock said he was 50-50 at the weekend. Obviously, he didn't make it. But he's gone on to say, um, I don't want to risk him. He will be a big player for us. 
He's a good centre-half and I'm looking for him to be involved versus Bradford next Saturday. Meanwhile, Pennock is still chasing new signings, it's confirmed. I would like to get a couple in and that is something we are working on. Myself, the chairman and Peter Taylor are working very hard. If we can get two or three in, I would be very happy. Um, be interesting now because obviously plenty of people have suggested that a keeper would be one of those that would they'd like to see come in. Um, because at the question and answer session last week, um, the club were quite adamant. I think it was AD as well as goalkeeping coach Glenn Johnson who said that they're actively looking to get Thomas Hadler, Thomas Hadler out on loan. Um, but then the surprise was that he was on the bench for the first league game of the season. So um, it's an interesting situation. Um, unfortunately, Bradley Garmston, that's in the paper, has broken down again. Um, it looks like a torn calf, so that's going to be a while you would think that's not going to be something that heals within a couple of weeks you're going to be looking at a month or two I would think um, so maybe now we'd have to look at maybe another sort of left full back left wing back type player um, the Josh Wright rumour seems to have gone a bit quiet so the Charlton things died off a little bit so maybe we're still okay in central midfield I'm not sure I don't think we need a striker um, so it'd be interesting to see who AD and Peter and Mr Scully are all looking at trying to bring in um, in terms of the player ratings this week in the, the Medway Messenger, they went for Thomas Holy 8, understandably, got mad of the match. Luke O'Neill 8, Gabriel Zaquani 8 and Max Amar 7, so it indicates that they were all pretty solid as a back three. Um, and it shows the benefits of consistency, doesn't it? Because that's been the, the, the main sort of back three um, trio for most of pre-season. Obviously, we've chopped and changed a little bit to get people minutes, but that seems to have been what you class as the first choice um, trio of centre-backs and again it's it's another another positive step um, in front of them Scott Wagstaff six Connor Ogilvy six that was the wing backs Billy Bingham seven holding so let's hope that the injury he picked up isn't too serious um, in front of him we had Lee Martin and Mark Byrne both given a seven um, and the two strikers Tom Eaves and Josh Parker were given a six so again it shows it's not too concerning yet it's one game let's not start going over the top but obviously that's that again as we've said that's the area that fans were a little bit concerned about maybe there's a slight lack of cutting edge but it is only 90 minutes um, in terms of substitutes Connor Wilkinson come on got 25 minutes or so and got 6 um, Josh Wright 6 for Billy Bingham only played 17 minutes and Liam Nash didn't get a rating because he only come on for the last couple of minutes of injury time so but it's great to see it's a good point um, let's just have a look to see if there's anything else in there um before I start wrapping today up, on Lee, that's not it. Um, we've covered Josh, uh, Thomas Holy, sorry. Captaincy role goes to Lee Martin. Jills were led out by their new captain at Doncaster on Saturday. It's talking about. Um, it's a real honour, said Martin. Uh, I'm delighted. Having come back from a serious injury, I now feel good and I'm looking forward to the weekend. So this was obviously written or spoken about on Friday. Speaking about his decision, Pennock said, Lee possesses all the qualities a captain should have. He has the experience and is constantly talking to the boys on the pitch. That said, everyone has a part to play and we want everybody to be leaders when they cross that white line. I couldn't agree more with that AD, to be quite honest. I think one man wears the armband, but if you can have plenty of those that want to talk and lead and organise it, it, does any, it doesn't do anybody any harm. So, um, great for Lee Martin, like I said, put something on one of our social media pages last week um, let's all get behind him um, especially this coming Saturday as well for the first home game that would be great and hopefully we can get a positive result but obviously we've got the small matter of the Carabao Cup I think it is if that's pronounced correctly on Tuesday um, but yeah all in all a, a, probably a steady if spectacular start to the season um, but I'd have definitely taken it if I'd been offered a point before and I said in my predictions the monthly predictions that we've series that we've started, I I said one all, so nil nil. It's probably better, I suppose, if you're a defender, but if you're a striker, maybe not so much. But it's a point on the board. Um it's another clean sheet, so it's back to back league clean sheets going back to last season, so that's a big step up. It's uh four in the last nine, I believe, including pre season, and five in the last ten, including that Northampton fixture. So that's that's clean sheets and fifty percent of our last ten fixtures. So that's um more positivity and more promise. Again, let's not get ahead of ourselves and run before we can walk, etc. But all the signs are still good and let's just hope we can go to Reading on Tuesday. I'm not saying we're going to win the game, but let's put in another good performance, another good shift. Hopefully those that didn't get involved on Saturday might get some minutes and, and put themselves in the frame for Saturday. 
And then obviously we move on to that at Valley Parade, uh, sorry, not at Valley Parade, at Priestfield at home to Bradford. Um, and hopefully pick up the first win of the season. But obviously we'll talk about that later in the week. We'll do a match preview and have a look at that game nearer the time. Um, anyway, I will start wrapping this up today. Um, thanks as always for watching. I'm going to try and say please retweet. I did it there. There we go. Had a bit of trouble with that yesterday. Please keep liking, subscribing and spreading the word. Um, your support's been fantastic as I always say. I know I'm repeating myself but it is appreciated. And until next time, up the jewels.